Alhamdulillah Alhamdulillah ya Allahumma salli ala Muhammad An-Nabi al-Ummi wa ala alihi wa sallam Rabbi shrah li sadri wa yassir li amri Wa ahlul ukratan min lisani yafqahu qawli Rabbana yassir wa la tu'asir wa tammim بالخير وبك نستعين يا فتاه سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم اللهم جعلنا دعاة إليك وإلى رسولك أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك لك وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا وحبيبنا وعظيمنا ومولانا محمد عبده ورسوله أرسله بالحق بشيرا ونذيرا وداعيا إلى الله بإذنه وسراجا منيرا قال الله تعالى في القرآن المجيد بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم إن الإنسان لربه لكنود حزر الكرام Honorable Assembly, first of all, give all praise and all thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala <coughs> for all the favors and bounties Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed on us. And we send salatu salam on his last and final messenger, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us human beings a high status. He has granted us a very high rank, and that is to say, whilst the angels were existent, whilst Jannat were already there, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose us human beings to be his representative on the earth. Allah chose us to be his representative. So even though there were the angels there, Allah did not take any one of the angels to make them his representative. Whilst the jinns were there, Allah did not take the jinns to be his representative. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as you could say, he bypassed the two. And Allah has granted us that status of being his representatives on earth. Allah says, وَإِذْ قَالَ رَبُّكَ لِلْمَلَائِكَةِ إِنِّي جَاعِلٌ فِي الْأَرْضِ خَلِيفَةً Allah says, when your Lord said to the angels, إِنِّي جَاعِلٌ فِي الْأَرْضِ خَلِيفَةً I'm placing my khalifas on earth. That is, I'm placing my representatives. And we know the angels, they ask Allah, قَالُوا أَتَجَعَلُوا فِيهَا مَا يُفْسِرُوا فِيهَا وَيَسْفِكُ الدِّمَا Do you want your representatives? Are you going to place such creation as your representative who will cause mischief and cause bloodshed? And Allah's response to them was, I know what you do not know. I know what you do not know. And Allah had granted us such a high status that Allah has made us his representative, his vicegerent on earth. And the reason for that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in another part of the Quran, Allah says, لَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي أَحْسَنِ تَقْوِيمِ Allah says, certainly we have created mankind as the best creation. أَحْسَنِ تَقْوِيمِ The best form, the best shape. Mankind, Allah is saying, لَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ I have created insan in the 
best of all of my creation, better than all other creation. Mankind, the way Allah has created mankind, Allah is saying, this is the best. Mankind is better than the creation of how Allah created the angels. Mankind is better than how Allah created the jinnats. And because Allah has granted us that and made us better than any other creation He has created, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَسَخَّرَ لَكُمُ اللَّيْلَ وَالنَّهَارُ وَالشَّمْسَ وَالْقَمَرُ Allah has subjected the night and the day for mankind. Allah has subjected the sun and the moon for mankind. وَسَخَّرَ الْبَحْرُ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has subjected the sea for mankind. وَخَلَقَ لَكُمُ الْأَنْعَامُ Allah tells us He has created the an'am, the animals for mankind, for the benefit of man. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَأَنزَلَ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ مَاءً Allah has sent down water from the heaven so that you get produce. Allah says, I've done all of that for man. Why? Because We're the best of the creations. That Allah, when He created Adam, even told the angels, Ujjuduli Adam, Prashreta Adam. Prashreta Adam. But then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, after He has done all of this for man, granted us such a high status, such a high rank, Allah says, Allah says, then we, we make him from amongst the lowest of the low. We return him to the lowest of the low. So even though Allah granted you such a high status, <coughs> Allah says, because of your own actions now, you have become even worse than the animals that I've created for you. I've created animals so that you can utilize I have made you the best and created animals for you, but now because of your own behavior, I've made you worse than animals. You have caused that on yourself, to be even worse than animals. And we see the behavior of human beings for the next few days coming. And when you look at that, that type of behavior you're going to see Monday and Tuesday and even on to Wednesday. That type of behavior definitely cannot be from amongst the best. You have torn, human beings have torn themselves into the worst. Allah says they are even worse than animals in Surah Al-An'am. But even though Allah has granted us such a high status with compared to the other creation, Allah has still placed weaknesses in us as human beings. Allah did not create us perfect. There are no one of us whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made perfect. Allah has placed different weaknesses in human beings. And we notice I'm not saying Muslims, I'm saying human beings because the entire mankind we're talking about. <clears throat> Allah has placed weakness in all of mankind. So when you compare man to the other creations, mankind is the best. But still, mankind is not perfect. Because only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is perfect. No one else is perfect besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Everyone else errs. Everyone else makes mistakes. Everyone else has shortcomings. Only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is perfect. Allah says, Yurid Allah ayyukhaffifa ankum wa khuliqa l-insanu da'ifa. Allah says, Allah intends to make it easy upon you. Allah is speaking about the sharia, the laws that he has given to us. Allah has made our sharia very easy for us. And Allah has considered our ability before he has placed certain commands for us to do. So Allah says, I made it easy for you. I want to make things easy for you. Even when it comes to fasting, He says, Allah wants to make ease, grant you ease. Allah does not want to cause a burden upon you. But Allah says, I, I intend to grant ease to you. Because I know mankind has been created weak. 
He did not say mankind is weak. He says mankind have been created weak. <laughs> Which means Allah already knows that how He has created us. And He knows the weaknesses in each and every one of us. And when you look through the Quran, <clears throat> you're going to see multiple places where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala points out the weaknesses of man. Many different ayats. You're going to see Allah is going to say, Mankind, Kulukala insanu min ajal, mankind has been created in his. And different, different parts of the Quran, you're going to see different weaknesses of human beings. And Allah pointing it out is not to embarrass us, it's not to, it's not to put us down. Allah mentioning or pointing out our weaknesses is for us to understand that these are our weaknesses as human beings. And if we understand those weaknesses, we'll be able to work on it to better ourselves. To be able to strengthen ourselves, to be able to correct ourselves when we realize that I'm going through this and this situation. So today, inshallah, I'm going to look at four different ayats from four different surahs. As I said, there are many other surahs, <clears throat> many different ayats, but I will look at four ayats from four different surahs. And as well, there are many solutions given to us by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'm just going to look at one common solution. So the first is in Surah Yunus. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِذَا مَسَّ الْإِنسَانُ دُرُّ دَعَانَا لِجَنْبِهِ أَوْ قَاعِدًا أَوْ قَائِمًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِذَا مَسَّ الْإِنسَانُ دُرُّ Whatever hardship afflicts mankind. Allah is telling us the weakness of man with regards to when he is faced with hardships and difficulties in life. So, وَإِذَا مَسَّ الْإِنسَانُ دُرُّ so whenever there is some sort of calamity, some sort of difficulty, some sort of hardship in the life of man, Allah says, da'ana li jambihi. He cries to us. He calls out to us. We call to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, li jambihi, on his side. Sometimes you're going through such a hard time that you have become bedridden due to medical conditions. And as you lie there on that bed, the only thing that you do at that time is beg and beg and beg. Not man. You don't beg man because you know human beings can't help you at this moment. You know the only one that can help you is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So anyone at that situation, why is you're not bed? And they are lying there and they know, you know what, I can't do anything for myself. No human being can really help me. The only thing they do is they turn to Allah. And they turn to Allah and beg and beg, Oh Allah, help me. Oh Allah, take me out of this situation. Oh Allah, remove this sickness from me. Allah says, they cry to Him on their side, Or sitting. Or sitting. Sometimes... <clears throat> You've been in a state that you have to be in a wheelchair or you cannot walk. Whilst you're sitting there, you're raising your hands and you're begging and you're crying to Allah. Oh Allah, remove this. Allow me to walk. I'm, if you allow me to walk, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I'm going to frequently go to the masjid and you make a long list of promises that you will do if Allah was to remove that from you. Allah says that even in the standing position, you're not taking down so much that you're bedridden or you're on a wheelchair or you have to sit, you cannot walk, but you're walking around, but there's so much of hardships in your life that you're standing and you're begging from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says, فَلَمَّا قَشَّفْنَا عَنْهُ دُرُّ مَرَّا كَأَلَّمْ يَدْعُونَ إِلَى دُرِّ مَسَّهْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that when we remove it, فَلَمَّا قَشَّفْنَا عَنْهُ دُرُّ When we remove that hardship, Allah says He walks by as if no hardship had ever touched Him. He walks by as if nothing has ever touched Him. He forgets the days and nights that He was crying and begging Allah to help Him. 
He forgets all the promises he made. Allah says, he walks as if nothing had never happened in the past. So Allah is telling us, one is when you're in hardship, first thing you're going to always turn to Allah. But then when you get relief, when Allah helps you, you forget the good help you get from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is one of the weakness of man. Sometimes we forget the favors we get from Allah. And not only from Allah, we even pass this on to the, other, to the creation as well. Sometimes we are, we are stuck in a certain situation and we look for help. And we go to this brother, we go to that brother. And they were so kind and they assisted us and they helped us. And now we get back on our feet. Instead of being grateful and acknowledging what they have done to us, what they have done for us, we pass like if we are the boss, as if I don't know you, you never helped me. And many times we see this, a type of ingratitude. Allah says, you turn away from him, forgetting the favors he had given to you. So this is one weakness. The next verse is in <clears throat> Surah Bani Israel. Allah says, وَإِذَا أَنْعَمْنَا عَلَى الْإِنسَانِ أَعْرَضَ وَنَا بِجَانِبِهِ Allah says, Allah says, when we favor mankind. So the first ayat was when you're faced with hardship. Your weaknesses during your time of hardship. Now Allah says, When we grant prosperity to man, when we grant favors to man, when this human being is seeing every single thing is going the way he wants it to go. His businesses is flourishing. His family life is good. Every single thing he do, he's just seeing profits and he's seeing benefits. Allah says, Allah says, he turns away from us. And he's arrogant. He becomes arrogant. When everything is going good, many a times these individuals, they credit their own self. They give the credit to themselves. So sometimes your business is going good, you say, you know what? I was the one. It's due to my brains. It's due to my planning. It is due to my intelligence. These things are going this way. It is due to my education and my certificate. I will be able to do this and this and that. Allah says, he feels that he is doing everything, but not knowing it is really Allah. Allah says, we give it to him. But because he's seen so much of comfort, he looks at his strength to see that, you know what, it is all my strength and my power that has given me this success that I'm seeing. <clears throat> and Allah says, but yeah, that same individual, who was feeling what? Everything good happening to me is because of me. It's because of my intelligence. It's because of my smartness. Allah said that same individual, that whenever evil afflicts him now, he becomes hopeless. He starts to look for someone to blame. Not himself. He starts to look for someone to blame. All the time was, I, it was me that made this happen. It was my education. But when things go wrong now, don't blame himself. He starts to look, why Allah had to do this to me? Why this one had to do that to me? Allah says, this is your weaknesses. Next, next surah is Surah Al-Adiyat. Allah says, Inna l-insani bi rabbihi lakanood. A weakness of man. Allah says, certainly mankind. In al insana li rabbihi lakanud, certainly man is ungrateful to his rob. Allah didn't say that unbelievers are ungrateful to his rob. Allah says, In al insana li rabbihi lakanud, certainly mankind is ungrateful to his rob. And not only that, he says, Wa inna hu ala dalika la shaheed. Allah says, man himself is a witness that he is ungrateful. 
So Allah is saying, each one of us is a witness to our own selves that we are ungrateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <clears throat> when we look at the favors Allah has given to us, and we look at what we do for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what we are doing for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is nothing compared to what Allah has given to us. Nothing. Every day Allah gives you so much. Allah grants you life for 24 hours in that day. Allah allows all your organs, Allah you to breathe. So much of things. Uncountable favors Allah gives you every single day. And now ask yourself. That is why Allah says you could witness it yourself. Ask yourself in a 24 hours for that day. How much did I turn to Allah or how much did I give back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And then we'll see how ungrateful we really are to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because sometimes all we did was just maybe pray our five daily salat and that was it. Nothing else sometimes. Sometimes you don't do nothing extra. All we do is because that is compulsory, we try our best to pray the five daily salat and we're done. But it's just through the mercy of Allah that the Prophet ﷺ, he says, you really cannot be grateful to Allah. But if Allah at least sees you praying your five daily salah, Allah consider you to be grateful. Even though that by itself, if you compare that and you try to weigh that, that five daily salat and so much of favors, you can't really be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But Allah is so merciful that Allah puts you down as being grateful just because you perform those five daily salat. Allah tells us one of the reasons for ingratitude to Him, Allah says, is because of our severe love for wealth. Our severe love for wealth. And when we look at that, in our 24 hours, most of the day we use in order to search for wealth. We are in our jobs. Check how much hours. Deduct the amount of hours you sleep. And when you sleep, you're doing that for yourself. Deduct the amount of hours that you eat. <clears throat> and check how much hours remaining that you take to go to your jobs. Sometime from 8 o'clock until 4 o'clock. So 8 to 4, you're searching for wealth. And maybe from 9 until Fajr in the morning, you're only sleeping. That is for yourself. So what have you really given to Allah? Most of it was really for yourself and for wealth. Yourself and your wealth. Nothing really for Allah. So Allah says, Inna insan, one of our weaknesses is, <clears throat> one of our weaknesses is our ingratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the fourth ayat is found in Surah Ma'arij. Allah says, Inna linsana khuliqa halua, ida masahu sharu jazua, wa ida masahu khairu manua. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, Inna linsana khuliqa halua. Certainly, mankind has been created halua. One of the, the meaning of halua is to react quickly. We love to react quickly. Another meaning given, is impatient. Mankind has been created impatient. We don't sit back and try to think before we react. Soon as a situation comes up, we are very, very quick to react to that situation. And sometimes because of our reaction towards the situation without sitting and thinking before we react, after we have done something sometimes, or after we have said something, we realize, you know what, this is not the right thing I should have done. This is not the right thing I should have said. And now you have become weak because you are regretful because of you acting too quickly. One of the meanings that I said is kill to sabr, which means someone being impatient. Allah says, you are created impatient. And that is every single one of us. No one of us here was created with sabr. No one of us. Every single human being 
was created without sabar. Sabar was something that we had to learn as we grew up. Because if we, whereas many of us, we look at as if not, I don't understand what it means that I was created impatient. Because at that age when you are created, you can't remember. But you have children and you have grandchildren. And Allah has granted you them so that you could recognize how you were. Because how you're seeing your grandchildren or your children as a baby, you are just like that as well. And now when there's a baby, and that baby is hungry, that baby don't say, no, I need to have supper. I'm just going to have supper. And whenever my mother ready, she's going to come and she's going to, to give me milk. A baby don't do that. What does a baby do? As soon as that baby feels hungry, starts to cry. Because that baby wants, as soon as that baby feels hungry, it is saying, I have to get something in my system. I have to get milk. I'm not going to wait until she wakes up. I'm not going to wait until I see her. She has to come now and give me that milk. So that baby will start to cry and cry and cry until he gets it. And this was all of us at one time. It is only after a period of time as we grow, we realize, you know what? You can't get everything you want at the same time. Sometimes you have to wait. As you get older, you realize your parents is going to instill that in you. You ask for something, as you get a little older, they're going to tell you, wait. Wait, just now you're going to get it. And that is where sober started to be implemented in your life. But how Allah created you, Allah created you without any sabr. There was no sabr. So Allah says that, was, that is a weakness in man. But it so happens sometimes we have grown old and we want to still have that same impatience as how we were born. That we feel that every single thing we have to get immediately. If I want it now, I have to get it now. So Allah says, Inna linsana kulika halua. Allah says, whenever any shar, whenever any evil, whenever any hardship or calamity touches him, jazua, he becomes vexed, he starts to fret, he becomes angry. And if we notice, if we look at it in our lives, if you lose your job, if you're going to work tomorrow morning, as soon as you step foot in that office, your boss gives you a letter and says, you know what, you're fired. Are you going to smile at your boss? Are you going to be joyous? No, you're going to be angry. Because that is not something that you like. You're going to be impatient. That is, that is what Allah says. You're going to just naturally become angry. You're not going to have no smile on your face. You're going to start to become vexed. So Allah says, because of that lack of patience, وَإِذَا مَسَّهُ الْخَيْرُ manua, And whenever any goodness comes his way, manua, he becomes greedy. He becomes greedy because he doesn't want to let go of it. He's scared. If I only let go of it, I'm going to have to search somewhere for it. I'm not going to have it for myself again. So I need to make sure I have it for myself. So these are some weaknesses. And as I mentioned, Allah has given us different solutions. But just one solution that I'm going to mention, Allah says, إِلَّا الْمُصَلِّينَ الَّذِينَ فِي صَلَاتِهِمْ دَائِمُونَ Allah tells us, all these weaknesses Allah has pointed out, this is how Allah has created us. But Allah tells us, إِلَّا musallin. Allah says, if you are praying salat, Allah is going to help you. If you are praying salat, salat is the solution. Lal musallin. And not only praying salat, but He says, أَلَّذِينَ فِي صَلَاتِهِمْ دَائِمُونَ That is, those who are punctual with their salat. Da'imun. So not praying one salat. Sometimes only when we go in a, a difficult situation, 
Then we start to pray salat. And we say, you know what? I hope Allah could help me. Allah says, no. You have to be punctual in your salat. Da imun. You have to be praying all five years salat every single day. Not one day a week. Not one day a year. Not one salat a day. Five salat every day. And Allah says, if you do that, if you are punctual with the five daily salat every single day, it's only females have a little exception a few days of the month. But as males, every single day, we don't have no exceptions. Every single day, it could be Eid, it could be which day. Every single day, five daily salat. Allah says, if you do that, then that same ingratitude will turn to gratitude. Allah is going to strengthen you. Allah is going to strengthen you from the weaknesses. That same impatience that you had, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to grant you sabr, grant you patience. But you have to follow the solution, use the solution. So we have the weakness. We can't get away from the weaknesses because Allah says you are created with these weaknesses. So if you are created with the weaknesses, you can't get away from that. But Allah says, I've given you a solution to help you as well. But what we do many a times, we keep those weaknesses and we don't use the solution. We allow the solution to just be there. <clears throat> so if we want to strengthen ourselves, to strengthen ourselves from those weaknesses, we need to use the solution. And I'm just giving you one of the solutions. There are many others, but just at least start with this. You pray your salat and you're going to see the difference in your life. May Allah help us all. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all the tawfiq and the ability to do actions which are pleasing to him. May Allah accept all of our good deeds. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enter all of us into his jannah al-firdaus. Wa akhiru da'awana and alhamdulillah rabbil alim.